Hello everyone, welcome back again to my channel. Before watching this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Now, let's start this video. The International Law of the Sea Border Dispute in Natuna Waters Concerning Sea Natural Resources in Water Border Base The total area of the sea is two-thirds of the Earth's territory and provides 97% of all life on Earth. Seawater is a place for living and it develops a wide variety of living creatures, both visible and invisible. In addition, the sea also supports the life and existence of man king by providing maximum benefits and uses for human life. It is right to say that the natural resources therein contain intrinsic values, namely assets or economic wealth for present and future generation. The higher the marine biodiversity is, the more economic potential the water has. This condition is very easily reflected because it is directly proportional. Natural resources which are located in the fix natural resources which are located in the vicinity of boundary areas of the sea, transboundary natural resources or often referred to as cross-border natural resources can be classified as a transboundary natural resources which is located under the seabed extending from the boundary of the two sides of the continental shelf. Hence, the natural resources can be exploited from the other parties' continental shelves either partially or completely. Specifically, in Indonesia, such as areas spotted in many different locations. This water borders area contain natural resources which are very potential to be developed and used as basic capital and opportunities to accelerate regional development, strengthening resilience, and so on. Therefore, it is not surprising if there are frequent disputes between countries related to the territorial waters that is promising as the potential of natural resources. For Indonesia, many aspects of international law have not been able to reflect the rules of joint, of joint use of international sea areas, especially in border areas. This can be seen from various problems. These problems include the unclear distribution of resources right in marine areas, various unclear sea boundary issues with neighboring countries, problem of cooperation in the scope of maritime security and agreements to exchange prisoners of fishermen between countries including the utilization including the utilization utilization of the biological resources in it adding to this problem is the following issues theft marine life illegal and reported and unregulated fishing where many of the proceeds of crime are proud and fully utilized by foreign countries and other problems related to the sea area. The maritime law in Indonesia to provide sovereignty in its water borders. The sea, especially the ocean, has special characteristics for human. As far as the law of the sea, the law means a series of regulations regarding the behavior of peoples are as members of the community and aims to establish order among the members of the community. The sea is a vast expanse of water between various continents and islands in the world. Because Indonesia's, because Indonesia's territory consists of 60% of the territorial waters or ocean, the condition of the Indonesian archipelago is, al is also elaborated. The identification of island in Indonesia has successfully confirmed the, the number of island in Indonesia as 70,508 island. Among this island, there are 7,353 have named, while 10,155 are unnamed, unnamed island. Out of the name island, 67 islands are directly adjacent to neighboring countries, and 11 of them are located 
on the other island which requires special attention. The 11 outermost islands in Indonesia are Skatung Island and Natuna Island in Riau Island Province, Mararo, Marore Island and Miangas Island in North Sulawesi Province, Fani Island and Vanildo Island in Pahala Island in Papua Province, Rondo Island in Nangro Aceh Darussalam or NAD, Pihala Island in Province North Sumatra, Nipa Island in Riau Province. In fact, Indonesia has territory directly adjacent to neighboring countries or a territory that is not direct, directly bordered as is the case with the People's Republic of China or PRC. There is a difference of views between the state of Indonesia and the other countries mentioned above regarding water boundaries. These differences in views have led to disputes with the countries mentioned above. The cases in the waters of Natuna Island in mid-January 2020 had proved to us. Understanding maritime law in general can be interpreted as law relating everything that is related. In the history of the Anglo-Saxon legal system, maritime law is translated by the term admiralty law. The term means matter concerning the handling of legal matters concerning maritime by a court of admirals. Meanwhile, in a narrower sense, maritime law is in terms of the term shipping. Shipping, skip far tax, cease transport law, the, equal, the equivalent term is not appropriate because the scope of understanding of maritime law is more diverse than the terminology of shipping or sea transportation law. Understanding maritime law according to Plex particularly relates to commerce and navigations, to ship and shipping, to seamen, to the transportation of person and property by sea, and the marine affairs generally. The law relating to harbors, ship, and seamen. The important branch of the commercial law of maritime nation is divided into a variety of departments, such as those about harbors, property of ships, duties and right of matters, and seamen, contracts of freight, average, salvage, and so on. Having understood the maritime law above, there are several focal points of maritime law to state. The focal point is in the interest of whom the maritime law was created. Thus, maritime law which focus on issues ar around trade, navigation at sea and everything that covers it, accommodates the mindset of the utilitarianism. Utilitarianism is the legal thought that prioritizes the actual interest of each individual so that the state is only an embodiment is only an embodiment of the actual interest of each its citizens this is what causes a lot of distortions and problems within law enforcement it can be understood that the result of law enforcement based on actual interest is the justification is justification of action that are international in nature are sensitive to claims that are empirical or require proof. Based on the based on the above understanding, the scope of maritime law includes matters relating to ships, matters concerning the sea port of these ships, matters about shipbuilding or ship industry and the aspect of civil law and public law from the things mentioned above. The main, the main function of maritime law are formulated in the issues the main function of maritime law are formulated in the issues of the escape economic and social commission for Asia and the Pacific Bangkok guidelines for maritime legislation. First, maritime law provides the legal framework for maritime transport, the carrying out of a state's foreign trade. Second, maritime law implements the basic objective of state as a port state and coastal state. And the last, maritime law may serve the achievement of certain economic purpose.
okay everyone that's all this article today thank you so much for watching until the next one bye bye